Hello, I'm Jamil Musaiba, an international social etiquette consultant and author of two etiquette books, Etiquette the Least You Need to Know and Afternoon Tea Etiquette. If you would like to order my books, please make sure to email me, I'll link it down below here as well in the description box and you can get full information about how to order my books. If you are new to my channel here, I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development. If you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you're an old viewer, welcome back to my channel. I'm really happy to see you here. A lot of you have been asking me to do videos on dress codes and some of my favorite dresses according to each dress code. So I decided to launch this series of deciphering the dress codes. And the first one I'll look at is the cocktail dress code because it's perhaps the most popular one, especially nowadays where we are invited to different kinds of events and most of them have cocktail dress code as their main dress code. I use a lot of word dress code, but the cocktail dress code is actually the name of whatever we're expected to wear. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's look at what is cocktail dress code? What do we wear? Where do we wear it? And at the end of the video, make sure to watch it until the very end, I'll show you some of my favorite cocktail dresses and I will also explain where they're from as well as why I love them. So with each of my video, I always start with a little bit of a history lesson of how the cocktail dress code actually appeared. It's basically the evolution of the launch uh, suit, which is the more formal dress code uh, that used to be um, the dress code for when men would attend parties and women would attend parties. This was a little bit more formal than what we understand today at the co as the cocktail dress code. So if you will, it's a little bit of a new touch to the traditional launch suit. And nowadays we are often invited to various different kinds of events or with the cocktail dress code, as the name suggests. This is often cocktail parties, you know, some social networking events, some gatherings. Even today, certain weddings have cocktail dress code as their main dress code. Um, back in the days, um, and in some of the most formal weddings, you would expect to have black tie as the dress code for the event. But as the weddings tend to be smaller these days and more casual, uh, it has changed to a cocktail dress code. So what essential is cocktail dress code? If we look at the spectrum of dress codes from the least formal to the most formal, the least formal being ultra casual and the most formal being white tie, cocktail dress code stands right in the middle. So it's not too formal like the black tie or white tie and it's not very casual like casual and ultra casual and even it's more dressed up than your business professional dress code. So this is something that stands in the middle and is a sort of a bridge between the formal wear and informal wear. And the essential important thing to remember about the cocktail dress code is that when you dress up, you have to think that you will have to dress up one notch up. So rather than your daily wear, you add some, add some bold accessories or maybe add some fancy shoes to kind of bring your look one notch up. That would be a cocktail dress code. But again, the time of the day, the season, the occasion that you're going to, the people that are going to be at that event, all of that will affect uh, what you will wear as your cocktail dress code. The reason I say this is because, for example, a professional party, a work cocktail dress, and a cocktail dress that you wear for your friend's birthday party will be very, very different because you need to keep in mind the overall general vibe uh, of the occasion that you're attending. Uh, so let's say for a cocktail dress code at your friend's party, you can obviously wear a mini cocktail dress, but for a professional one, you might want to wear something that is below your knees, that has a closed decollete, so all that will affect your decision. The good news about the cocktail dress codes is that there are no strict rules, which is very different from black tie and white tie event, where there are certain rules that need to be followed. With cocktail dress code, all you need to do is you need to be glammed up, you need to look dressy, but at the same time, there are no strict rules that you need to abide by. So generally speaking, when you're invited to any kind of event and when you're in doubt, 
because the invitation does not indicate a certain dress code. What you could do is you could ask the host what the dress code is and they would refer you and explain what the dress code is. Or if nothing is stated and you get no response from the host, the safest bet is to assume that this is a cocktail dress code because that way you'll be dressed up but not too formal. So you're not overdressed for the occasion, but you're just enough dressed up to attend an event where you want to make an impression. With all of that being said, let's look at what women could wear for a dress code that denotes as cocktail dress code. Actually, women have all the liberty in terms of their wardrobe choice. You could wear a mini, mini dress or you could wear a knee length, length dress. The best thing to do is to avoid full a floor gown because that's something that you would wear for a black tie or a white tie event. Some people argue that for cocktail dress code uh, many dresses are not welcomed but as the fashion has changed and evolved and as the norms of what's acceptable has changed in terms of fashion nowadays many cocktail dresses are also very much welcomed but again you have to keep in mind the occasion this is something you could wear to your friend's party but perhaps you'd want to avoid for a professional party. Dresses are not the only things that is acceptable for a cocktail dress code. You could wear a jumpsuit, you could wear a pantsuit and a jacket, you could wear perhaps a skirt and a blouse. Really, you could experiment with your wardrobe, you could wear anything that is a little bit more different than your casual wear. So jeans are not allowed for a cocktail dress, um, definitely no sneakers, that's not something that's welcome there. In terms of your shoes, now that I've mentioned sneakers, you are welcome to wear anything. Um, I would suggest going for pumps, um, the, again the height of the heel depends on what you prefer to wear, but in terms of the shape and the color and, and if your toes are open or not, that is something that you're flexible to choose. For example, in white tie dress coat your toes should be closed so you should wear pumps that cover your toes whereas in cocktail dress coat you could wear sandals expose your toes as much as you'd like so here you have the liberty of again choosing the style of the shoes in regards to the choice of your bag, avoid any tote bags or big shopping bags or any big chunky bags. I would suggest opt for something that is a small to medium bag and even best is to wear clutch because then you can always place the clutch in your left hand and then have your right hand uh, to greet people because this is something that is often happening in cocktail parties where people meet and greet a lot. Uh, if we compare it for example with a black tie event where it's very sit down, very formal. For accessorize, again, this is the time for your personality to shine. You can choose to dress up any way in terms of accessorize as well. You can choose bold accessorize or smaller ones. Uh, really anything is welcomed. But again, when you are dressing up for an event, keep in mind the occasion and people that will be there. Uh, if you're attending a cocktail event during the daytime, perhaps it's best not to wear any diamonds. But if it's a gala event that, you know, uh, of some jewelry place that has a lot of diamonds and you would expect other guests to wear diamonds and of course you could wear yours as well. Uh, if you're going for a professional party, you would want to avoid some bold accessories and rather opt for something more subtle. Whereas if you're going to for your friend's birthday party where the dress code is cocktail, you can of course wear something that's very bold and it's a statement piece that really shows your personality. In terms of hair and makeup, again, this is your time to choose whatever you find suitable. In terms of hairstyle, something that's very different, let's say from a white tie event where your hair has to always be up. Here your hair could be up, down, beach waves, braids, um, I don't know, you could have a sleek ponytail, whatever you find suitable to your style, your dress and your general style is something that you could wear. But in terms of your makeup, again, the time of the day, if it's daytime cocktail party or evening time, the occasion, is it professional or is it just a social gathering, all of that will influence your choice of makeup. Here again, your personality can shine, you can show who you are through makeup, but you have to keep in mind if it's a daytime party that's professional, for example, you'll go for something more minimal, perhaps avoid some sparkles or really bright eyeshadow uh, or bright lipstick, whereas for an evening gathering that's a social gathering, you can go for something super sparkly, really bold lips, really bold eyeliner. All of that is something that you would make the choice yourself, but always keep in mind the time of the day, the occasion, people that will be there and what kind of impression you want to make when attending that party. 
For men as well, the same liberty applies in terms of selecting what to wear. The only thing that's not welcomed are jeans, hockey pants, and shorts. This applies, of course, to women as well. Uh, men could opt for some dress pants of any color, material, or fitting with matching or perhaps a different jacket or blazer uh, with the color of their choice, as well with a shirt that could be of any color, any fitting, any material that they find suitable. Again, the time of the day, the season, uh, and the event will dictate what particularly they need to wear. So for example, if it's winter time, uh, you might offer, let's say, a velvety, dark burgundy jacket, whereas in summer you might switch it to a white linen jacket so this all the season will dictate what kind of shape and form and color and material you would pr probably uh, most likely wear speaking of winter you could also change your dress shirt let's say to a roll neck uh, a turtleneck so to speak so really men also have a lot of leeway in terms of choosing the choice of their uh, wardrobe what they want to wear what color they want to wear what fitting and material they want to wear in terms of the shoes uh, sneakers are not allowed so no casual uh, shoes should be worn with a cocktail dress code you could opt for oxford shoes for brocades monk strap shoes derby lace all of that any kind of dress shoe is welcomed if this is a cocktail dress code for a wedding for men, you could also add a bow tie or a tie to kind of give one notch up to your entire look. Again, a lot of the factors will influence on your choice of the wardrobe, but really cocktail dress codes allows men and women both to experiment with their looks, to find their unique style and to allow that style to speak for their personality. When it comes to my own selection of cocktail dresses for my wardrobe, I always make sure that I go for some classical colors that never go out of fashion. Like the white one I'm wearing right now, black, navy, red. I also make sure that they don't have any bold patterns or something really bright and screaming, a certain season or a certain trend, so I could wear them over and over again. The reason I think this way is because I often get invited to parties where the dress code is cocktail, which means I'll have to repurchase a new dress every time, which is not very practical. Which is why whenever I'm making the, the purchase, I keep in mind how many times can I possibly wear this dress. So I offer something that is very subtle and simple and classy and timeless. So then with the use of makeup, hairstyle and some accessories, I can always change the look. I will now show you my favorite five pieces from my wardrobe for cocktail dress code. I'll also disclose the name of the brands of these particular pieces. I've shown some of them on my Instagram page and a lot of you have asked me what, who makes them, what's, who's a designer and oftentimes, truth be told, I forget who makes them because some of them have been purchased a while back. So make sure to watch this until the very end to see each dress and then to see who makes them. So the first dress that I'm currently wearing for this video is a dress by Alexander McQueen. It was gifted to me about nine years ago. I have worn this to many different occasions with very different hairstyle, different makeup, sometimes red lips, other times nude, different kind of shoes and different kind of accessories, sometimes with belt, other times not. And so I've always dressed either up or down the look. I really like this dress because it's very fitting. It has a proper uh, length. It has a really fitting style and really complements the body shape. Um, so it can hide either the really wide thighs or create volume if you don't have it. So I think this kind of fitting looks good on everyone. The second dress for today's video is this red dress by Self Portrait. I really like this kind of fitting dress. Um, this particular parts that I really love and I've mentioned this already in my spring dress collection is that I really like the sleeves that are exposing the wrist that are fitting on the arm and have this puffy sleeves I really like the v-neck uh, I like when the dress is accentuating the waist so it's tighter on the waist it's more fitting there and I love this little slit that it has uh, on one part uh, that adds a little bit more femininity to the entire look um, generally speaking I wanted to show this dress in contrast with the first dress so that you could have an idea of how different cocktail dresses can be. The first one is the one that I would probably wear for a professional cocktail party, but for an evening time social cocktail party with my friends, uh, I would probably wear this dress. 
This third dress is the one that you probably recognize from the Bulgar video and if you follow me on Instagram probably have seen a picture, a glimpse of this a skirt with feathers and the shoes uh, from the video, from the day we were shooting the video for Bulgari. This dress is by a brand called 16 Arlington. The reason I love this dress is because it is very simple, it is very fitting, it looks I think timeless after the time where you see the feathers uh, but even so I think feathers add a little bit of touch and glam up the entire dress. So this season feathers were really in. Uh, I know that that might get out of fashion in the next year or the year after, but I'll definitely come back at some certain point and I'm sure this dress will stay in my wardrobe for a really long time. Also with this dress you can see how a different kind of a hairstyle, let's say a sleek ponytail or if I change the color of my uh, lipstick or I do different makeup on my eyes, how the entire look can completely change based on my makeup, my hairstyle and even accessorize. This black dress is by the brand called Self Portrait the same brand that was the red dress earlier in this video. I have shared a picture in this dress uh, on my Instagram and I received a lot of love and a lot of compliments that it suited me really nice. And I wore it with a red lipstick and even the change in the color of the lipstick or the hairstyle can really change the entire look, uh, especially when a dress is very simple in terms of its color, doesn't have any bold patterns that are recognizable. So um, if you wear something that has really, really a lot of print, then even if you change your makeup, the dress will be the first to be noticed. But with dresses like this that come in black, red, white, dark navy color, you can always play up with your makeup and accessorize and really change the entire look. I really like this style of dresses, as you've probably noticed, again, accentuated waist, open neckline, really nice slit part in one part. So this is very similar again to the style of the red dress that I showed earlier, um, but I personally really like this style and I don't mind collecting dresses in the same style but different colors in my wardrobe. I wanted to add this dress also to the wardrobe collection for cocktail dresses so you can see how different the cocktail dress code could be, how a variety of different dresses can be grouped as cocktail dress code. So the one that I wore before, that one that had feathers, the one uh, that was red, all of that including this one is also a dress that's appropriate for a cocktail dress code. I personally really like this dress because of its beautiful color. It's a dark navy color that is always timeless, always in fashion and I really like the style of a dress. Um, I like this neckline that's exposed the decollete area. I think it adds so much femininity to the entire look and plus the most special part of the dress are its sleeves that have slits on both hands and they expose your arms and your wrists which adds a little bit even more femininity to the entire look. This dress is by Misha Collection and I purchased it about four years ago. I will share a picture from the birthday of my son uh, where I wore it with a different hairstyle and different makeup and different shoes and I think that totally changed the entire look of this dress. This is the jumpsuit that you probably recognize from the stories on my Instagram. I truly do not know the name of the brand that produced this jumpsuit. Unfortunately, there is no tag on the jumpsuit and I've purchased it about at least seven years ago, so I really don't know the name. The only thing I know is that I fell in love with it the day I saw it because of how fitting it is and how really classy can be, although the back is open, so if I'm going to somewhere that's more professional, I would definitely wear a jacket over and not take it off. Uh, but for a more social cocktail dress code, I'll definitely wear it without any jacket like I'm doing right now. And I love that it is black color, so that means I can always uh, wear it multiple times and with different hairstyle and with different makeup, it is going to always look very, very different. So now you can see how with the change of lipsticks, I just put my hair up, I changed my shoes and how this jumpsuit really has a different vibe now from the one that I showed you earlier. So this is what I meant, how you can choose a dress or jumpsuit or you know a skirt and a blouse that is very simple and its color is fitting in its style and then you can play with accessorize your makeup and your hair in order to change the entire look. 
Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed learning about cocktail dress codes and you love the dresses that I shared with you. I do hope that you did. Please do let me know down in the comment section below which one your, were your favorite looks or perhaps you only had one favorite look. Do let me know what you think and please do make new video suggestions. I love reading your feedback. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!